How's it going YouTube? If you enjoy my videos, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload new and amazing content just like this video. In this video, I drive around the neighborhood surrounding downtown Evansville, Indiana. If you are unfamiliar with my videos, I do speed up my videos in order to show more in a less amount of time, and this video is sped up ever so slightly. Evansville is home to 118,000 residents, which is down from a 1960 peak population of 141,000. 21% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and the median household income is $38,000 per year. Of the 118,000 residents that call Evansville home, up to 22% of those residents are living in poverty. Now the hometown folks aren't going to like hearing this, but back in 2014, Evansville was named as the meth capital of the world. If you tell them that to their face, they're going to fire right back at you about how the number of reported meth labs in the city have fallen drastically, but hear this. In early February of 2020, there is a report saying that 13 babies over the last 30 days were born addicted to drugs. That's more than any other 30-day period in the last two years. Indiana as a whole is notorious for drug usage, especially especially meth in the early 2010s from around 2010 to 2015. In 2013, 115 meth labs were reported in the Evansville area, and per capita that made Evansville front and center on the map for meth labs. Before you fire away at me for mentioning your drug problem, Evansville, realize that I never said that everyone that lives here is a drug abuser. All I'm saying is that you just have quite a bit more drug users than average that live here. And if you live here, you probably know one or two or three or maybe even ten admit it guys you do I am currently driving through the more blighted areas in town. I'm currently in the Jacobsville neighborhood, which is just north of downtown Evansville, and soon I'll be in Jimtown. Jimtown is one of, if not the worst neighborhood in Evansville. While I was editing this video, which was on Monday, June 15th, I looked up the news headlines in Evansville, and it looks like there was an arson in Jimtown a few mornings prior in the 700 block of Iowa Street. The violent crime rate in Evansville was 691 for every 100,000 residents in 2017 and it's been consistently rising over the last several years. The property crime rate here is double the US average. Jobs are hard to come by and the median owner occupied housing value is $92,000. That's pretty low considering that the US has a median value of $205,000. Usually there's a reason why certain areas offer cheap real estate. It's usually due to crime, poor schools, poor economy, or unwanted drug activity. Evansville is no exception. I'll admit that I've been pretty mean about Evansville so far, and there are definitely good things about the place too. If you want to hear me say nicer things, go check out my downtown Evansville video if you haven't already. Another thing about Evansville that you have to know is that it is along the Ohio River. The Ohio River flows from Pittsburgh to the Mississippi River and is the most polluted river in the United States. That's largely due to a facility called AK Steel which is not too far upstream from Evansville. Indiana has not only the worst water pollution in the country, but also the worst air pollution in the country. Anyway, AK Steel has accounted for over 70% of the 23 million pounds of toxic chemicals that are in the Ohio River. If you live here, 
here or are planning on moving here, you better go get a water filter and fast. Make sure to drop a like for that heads up recommendation and looking out for your health. To the left ahead is Bossy Field, which opened in 1915. I turn left at this intersection and then it's also going to be to the right. It was also the first municipally owned sports stadium in the US and is the third oldest ballpark still in regular use for professional baseball. That is, if you want to call the Evansville Otters a professional baseball team. I, I kid, I kid. Only slightly. Anyway, Wrigley Field and Fenway Park are the only professional ballparks that are older. Make sure to drop a like because honestly, we all know that you didn't know that before. I guess I can start mentioning some good things too. Evansville actually has an above average school system, which is surprising to me because principal cities with the problems that Evansville has usually don't have good public schools. Now those good schools are not found anywhere around where I'm driving, but more so in the annexed areas of Evansville. Those are the areas that are technically within the Evansville city limits, but are outside of the city's original footprint. Basically the residential subdivisions and whatnot that used to be outside of the city limits, but over time were annexed by Evansville. More than half of the land that the city owns seems to be annexed land. Other cities in Indiana are this way too, such as Indianapolis and Fort Wayne, and that type of plan along with low taxes has helped these larger cities in Indiana greatly from becoming islands of urban blight. Not that Indiana is free of them or anything, but just take a look at some of the cities in Illinois if you want to see what kind of disasters Evansville has been able to avoid. Make sure to drop a like and subscribe for that amazing knowledge. Now this area that I'm in is called Baptist Town and is just east of downtown Evansville. Once again, if you haven't checked out my downtown Evansville video, make sure that you do so. Anyway, Baptist Town has some deep KKK roots and you can find deep traces of KKK all across the Hoosier state. The KKK once had control of the Indiana Republican Party and through it controlled the state government. This is also where blacks were forced to live back in the 1920s in Evansville is Baptist Town. The KKK was able to get a black male that went by the name of Ernest 
Tidrington, I believe I said that name right, to join their side in an attempt to win over other black voters. The agreement was to build a new high school in town for blacks with his name on it. At the time, there was a black pool hall owner named Luther Bell that didn't like what Tidrington was doing. In response, Tidrington wanted to get Bell's business shut down and he did. As the new mayor that was elected in 1930, Frank Greasy, granted his wish. Bell then shot Tidrington dead. After that, an all-white specially selected jury later acquitted him by reason of temporary insanity and Bell reopened his business. Bell was later killed in a mysterious one-car accident 19 years later on on Lincoln Avenue. Hmm. Well today, Lincoln Elementary School, which used to be the lone black high school in town, still stands, and I didn't film it because I'm dumb and didn't realize the historical racial significance of this neighborhood before I came down here and I only realized it later when I was editing the video. Nonetheless, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to my channel for that amazing insight because we all know that you didn't know that before. Well, that's about it for this video, guys. If you enjoy my videos, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video of an area near you. We'll see you next time. Peace!